There are a lot of dark moments, themes, and ideas that are present and famous in all iterations of Full Metal Alchemist, but one of the most understated is one that I'd like to look at today. Over time, what exactly counts as a descriptor for the soul has been sort of vague. Some say that adding descriptors to the soul itself means that you are bound to your nature and therefore forfeit your free will. While others say that if a soul has no descriptors, how can it possibly maintain to be the person that it was after it leaves its body? While both positions put forward a lot of epistemological questions that lead to far deeper rabbit holes than what is needed for this video, I think it is still an interesting and important backdrop to lay down for how Full Metal Alchemist deals with souls, and by virtue of that, deals with Al and his situation. So that being said, there will be slight spoilers for a few plot beats and story details, as well as some character interactions in this video. So you have been warned. To better understand what Al goes through within the series, I want to try and pin down what sort of conception of the soul Full Metal Alchemist describes to. As I just said, there are many different thoughts about such. The soul in Full Metal Alchemist seems to be something that can escape or go away. It seems to be something manipulated by others and not so much controlled by the self or the soul. The most obvious example I can think of is that of the Philosopher's Stones, which are created by, in fact, trapping and taking souls against their will and then using those human souls to power it. But the example I'm obviously going to be looking at more in depth is something that has similar horrifying implications. It's the soul of Alphonse Elric. Alphonse Elric from the beginning of the series is trapped for much of his life in a suit of armor after the tragic event kickstarting the series has taken his body from him. The reality of what he is going through is most interesting and probably sad and disturbing, depending on how you look at it. Let's first talk about what Al maintains as a soul. He seems to maintain his conscience, his personality, his rationality, and his agency. It also appears that these things have fewer or no limiters, as I will get into later. With regards to conscience, this doesn't have too many implications other than that he is still a free-thinking being. The idea that being an autonomous being makes the person a person or a soul a soul can be tracked all the way throughout history, from Aristotle to Descartes to countless other people who may in many regards generally disagree with each other, but on this seem to think similarly. The interesting one that he maintains is his personality, which is something debated sometimes as recent science and psychology has shown that the left frontal lobe of the brain seems to determine personality. One common example of this is Phineas Gage, a mine worker who, while packing gunpowder, had a lead pipe shoot through his skull, disrupting only this part of his brain. Everything about his memories, his rationality, seemed to stay the same, but he changed in temperament from being a very relaxed and confident leader to being an off-the-handle, angry person. So, in this world of Full Metal Alchemist, it is possible that the part of the brain that controls personality does not control the personality of the conscience, but is a tool the conscience uses to display personality through the body, and when that is damaged, the soul can't properly articulate itself. But, seeing as he's in a suit of armor, it doesn't make much sense there. So, I think it's more likely, and more interesting, that he is actually channeling through the body that was taken by the truth, and is using that in terms of his mind to still articulate through the suit of armor, which seems to imply something that kind of makes sense, that since Al's body is being held by the truth, then there may still be some sort of link to those basic human functions that do not require immediate bodily maintenance. This all falls very strongly into a Thomistic view of dualism, that the body is a vehicle for the soul, and not a more Anglican view that the soul and the body are one. In this way, the author chooses to express the idea of the soul in a way that very much fits with the other tone of Fullmetal Alchemist, and goes back to works like Summa Theologica, although this may not have been necessarily intentional. Now then, where the horror part begins. What are the things he does not keep being just a soul in a suit of armor? The things he loses are functions that maintain a body directly, and would seem to have no direct connection to brain behavior, like personality and mental state. Since he has no means to properly eat, drink, or taste, these features are omitted and instead passed on to his brother Ed, leading to one of the saddest and most underappreciated bits of character building in the story. Al can't sleep. Across the manga 2003 and Brotherhood, to lesser and greater extents, the reality of Al's condition is something that is brought up and it's heartbreaking. 
From childhood until now, he never experienced puberty. He has no body to physically develop and feel. His body is separate from himself, may have, but he hasn't seen it. He hasn't felt it. He lives for years after Ed has fallen asleep, sitting in the dark, wishing to cry and escape the mode of constant alertness, but he can't force himself asleep, and he cannot cry to express his pain. He can't feel anything other than mental and emotional pain. It's as if he's forced to experience the world while being robbed of the experience itself. No breaks, no moment of silence, constantly awake and waiting. When it is revealed in the series that Ed eats more food to compensate for Al's body, this is made even more heartbreaking. Not only does he have few reasonable ties to his body, but he also has no direct means of improving his own condition. That is all left on his brother, to stay fit and eat well, and that is something that must plague and guilt him as much as it does Ed. It's really a masterful detail that expands worlds on Alphonse's character as a patient, mature person that despite the agony manages to work through and be strong for everyone. He somehow maintains his optimism too, not becoming too bitter or angry or comparing his run of luck with others, but taking his hand and doing with it the best. It's a nightmarish reality that, in my opinion, shows more strength than almost any other character has to bear, with such a rugged smile. And while I say rugged smile, it draws emphasis back to even something as simple as the smile. A frown. Anger. It's something that he can only express with his actions and the tone of his voice. There is no face to let people know when he is hurting, or to key people in and there is no way for them to properly help him, except to get his body back. I really can't emphasize enough, the soul of Alphonse Elric is one that touches upon a reality without basic limits, a reality that takes life of a real person and places it inside something the soul wasn't made to equip. It echoes a lot of the worries people have with an always-on life, and is a horror that Al bears the best that he can. I want to thank The Single Way Out as well as all of my patrons once again for supporting me and helping me get through a lot of the stuff I'm going through. Also, since I'm really bad at self-promotion, I'd like to point out, hey, I have a Discord server, I have a Twitter, follow me, um, they'll be in the description, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching to the end.